Being the new Secretary General of the Anglican Communion means a lot to me. Is, uh, it is a huge privilege to, to serve God um, in this capacity and to make my contribution to the Anglican Communion family. I'll bring to this role my experiences of being bishop in, in South Sudan and also my experience having worked as the Archbishop of Canterbury's advisor on Anglican Communion Affairs where I built relationships across the Anglican Communion. I have had the privilege of traveling to various parts of the Communion and also uh, been to various other meetings of the Communion, Primates meetings, the Anglican in Consultative Council um, meeting as well as Standing Committee meetings. So it, it, this, this experience that I have uh, built in the last five and a half years and I look forward to using these experiences in, in this capacity as, as I, I lead the staff team here at the Anglican Communion Office and also continue to support the, the instruments of the Communion. Someone shared with me the, the importance of having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I then took the step of uh, you know, accepting Christ and, and, and followed him. Uh, later on in life, I, uh, at the beginning, I thought, you know, my father is a priest. Why, why, why am I being asked to take this uh, step? Uh, then I, I realized that actually the relationship with Christ is a personal relationship. Uh, you have to take the, a step of faith by your, on your own accord rather than through your, your parent. In fact, later on I learned in life that God only has children. He does not have grandchildren, which means that you actually become a child of God on your own accord, not through your father, not through your mother. And so it's, it's important. I have uh, found it very important to, to spend time in, in, in reading the Word of God, uh, especially with my scripture and background, because the Word of God is an important uh, aspect of our lives for, for, our, for our spiritual growth. I was born in 1964 and uh, when we were, uh, when I was less than a year, my father and mother and siblings uh, went to Uganda. Uh, this was the first civil war and so we were, we were refugees in, in Uganda. And my father uh, was an Anglican priest, and he served among uh, Sudanese refugees in, in, in the southern part of Uganda, in a place called Bogerere. Um, when I was nine, uh, we came back to South Sudan, 1973, uh, where I then joined the local primary school. My father carried on his ministry as, as a priest in the, in the Episcopal Church of Sudan then. Um, I then um, went, went uh, to secondary school in a place called Loka and went to university in Juba, the University of Juba, where I studied uh, management and public administration. Um, just before graduation, I, I felt called to ministry with Scripture Union. So immediately after, when I finished university, I joined the Scripture Union and carried on doing uh, my work with Scripture Union uh, until I felt the need to go for studies, uh, theological studies. Uh, so I went and did an MA in Biblical Studies at the Nairobi International School of Theology in 1992 to 1994. Um, thereafter, went and served among Sudanese refugees in northern Uganda. Uh, with, with scripture. And during the time I was there, the, the local bishop who was serving the refugees asked uh, whether I should consider uh, ordination. And, and I said, yes, I will, uh, especially because I was already training clergy. And he felt it would be important for me to be a, an ordained clergy in order to train clergy. So uh, I was then ordained uh, as, as a deacon in, in 1995, uh, priested in 1996. Um, carried on working for Scripture Union until I then joined 
a Christian organization called Across uh, that was working in Sudan but from Nairobi. So I worked for Across for over eight years, uh, starting as the coordinator of the Sudan Literature Center. A few years after that, Across asked me to come and do an MBA at Oxford Brooks University. My, my MBA was, was actually named MBA in the area of publishing. So I then went back, um, rose um, from um, coordinator of the Sudan Literature Center to become the publishing director, deputy executive director, until I became the director of the organization. In 2007, I was elected Bishop of Kaju Keji. Uh, in 2017, war uh, spread uh, throughout most parts of South Sudan, and Kaju Keji, where, where, where I come from, was affected. Um, in February 2017, 95% of the people of Kaju Keji were forced out of Kaju Keji, uh, including the, the bishop, the, the bishop who took over from me. Uh, they were all forced uh, into exile and were refugees in Uganda. Uh, in fact, I recently visited uh, the refugees in northern Uganda. Many of them are still there. The reason why they were forced out of South Sudan was because of the, 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 the fighting that was taking place between government forces and, and, and those who took up arms. Uh, the result was that uh, civilians were, were casualties. Uh, many of them were killed in crossfire. So they all had to flee for, for, for their lives. Uh, as I said uh, earlier, the Bishop of Kaju Keji, Bishop Emmanuel, was also forced out. And uh, until recently, he was, was based in the Ugandan town of Moyo. He has now gone back uh, to South Sudan. But many of his people are still in, in, in exile. And many are waiting for, for, for peace, for you know, the result to, to see actually the peace agreement being implemented before they go back uh, to South Sudan. Take the example of Uganda, a, a country that has its own struggles. Uh, they have gone an extra mile by, by providing you know, a home uh, for, 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 for these refugees. Not only have they provided a home, they have provided them land so that they, they can cultivate. Now, within their own uh, mega resources, they, they, they have done that. And I think that's, that's, that's an example of what, what uh, you know, the churches or countries in the North could, could learn. Instead of, uh, you know, appearing to, instead of limiting the number of refugees to X number of refugees, Uganda has opened its borders and say, come, because you are fleeing from, from, from conflict, you can't then say it's up to this number of people that we can, we can, we can allow to enter our countries. Uh, I have seen the impact of conflict, the impact of war. Uh, people my age have now been displaced at least three times. Uh, South Sudanese my age have been displaced at least three times. And that, that, is not, that is not good, that's not healthy. Hence the importance of reconciliation because it's important to sort out whatever problems that you have uh, rather than allowing the problem to fester, allow the problem to become a huge issue leading to war, leading to conflict, leading to death of people, uh, killing of people and, and displacement. And my passion for, for reconciliation. And reconciliation is, 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 is a ministry that is important. Well, God has shown that himself by sending his son Jesus Christ to reconcile us to himself. And his expectation is for us to be reconciled one with, another, to be reconciled one with, with each other. An important part of being an Anglican is actually attending the Lambeth Conference and, and fellowshipping with other believers. Uh, I remember when I attended the 2008 conference, it, it was exciting to meet uh, bishops from different parts of the world. Now, although contexts are different, you actually then realize that you have uh, similar challenges. Uh, and, and when you sh share these challenges with each other, you find encouragement. So you pray together and read the word of God together. So it's, it's a time, I believe, that the bishops will find very, very, a time of encouragement 
uh, as as they meet fellow bishops from from different parts of the world. There are many things that at the moment affect the the, 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 the this world that we are part of. And looking at the theme of the of the Lambeth Conference, you know, God's Church for God's World, we, it's important that um, we 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 meet we meet these needs. I like the phrase we we need to scratch where it is itching. And so it's important that you know the, the church undertakes its role uh, in in meeting the needs that that uh, that 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 we, that we have. And the, Anglican, the beauty of the Anglican Church is that. It, its presence is all over, over, all over, all over the world, and, and also at various grassroots levels. And so, meeting these various needs at the local level is important. Mm -hmm.